Okay, hi. Now we should know by now that antibiotics are an extremely powerful way for us to treat infections which are contracted as a result of bacteria. Now one problem with antibiotics is that bacteria can develop what is known as antibiotic resistance. Now the reason this is a problem is that if a bacteria has resistance to an antibiotic, it means that antibiotic will no longer kill it. And therefore, if that bacteria is causing us harm, that antibiotic cannot be used to treat the problem. Now, one thing I want to make clear straight away is that antibiotic resistance is a random process. So it is random. Even though we can cause the problems which it, it will actually create, the process of developing resistance itself and the process of mutation is completely random. And what I mean by that is that all bacteria and all organisms for, for that matter, even us, everything is mutating all the time. And so if bacteria are mutating all the time, that is a random process. Now what causes a problem is when we introduce the antibiotic this leads to natural selection. Natural selection. So you've probably heard of Darwin's theory of survival of the fittest. If we have a load of bacteria growing on an agar plate, then there is no real selection pressure there because none of them are being killed, all of them have got food, etc. and they will all grow. So let's have a look at what I mean using some agar plates. So if we've got these two agar plates, right? And these purple dots again are going to represent bacteria. Now we've got loads of bacteria here, they're dotted around and they're all fine, they're all happy, okay? All of these colonies of bacteria can all survive. Now all of these bacteria are mutating all the time but we don't know that because they're all there and there's no way of us realizing which ones have mutated. Now what if we add an antibiotic? So if we plus let's say penicillin for example. So we add penicillin to this agar plate and then we try and move all these bacteria over here and let them grow. Now what if this one, so this colony here and this one here are visible but there are no other colonies. So these two right here and here, these two have grown on the new plate and the rest of them haven't. Well what can we establish from that? The rest of them have been killed by the penicillin because you know that's what penicillin does. It's an antibiotic and it will kill bacteria. So why are these two um, why are these two present? Why have they survived? That is because they have mutated and they have formed resistance to penicillin. So these colonies have mutated and are now resistant to penicillin. And that is obviously a problem because if we use penicillin to treat a disease, these guys who have mutated, uh, they are now a massive issue for us. Now what would happen if we incubated this plate overnight? Well, we would end up with a plate that looks like this. So overnight, this plate has formed this plate because the bacteria have been allowed to grow and reproduce. Now because these bacteria have reproduced and all of these bacteria are resistant to penicillin, their young, um, or all of these bacteria, are now resistant to penicillin. So resistant to penicillin. And that's because when a bacteria reproduces, it produces copies of itself, it's like cloning. And so every single one of these colonies, so every bacterial cell, and there are now lots of them, they are all resistant to penicillin. And so now you can see why this is such a massive problem, because these bacteria now can all resist the antibiotic, which makes penicillin useless in treating the condition that this bacteria causes. Okay, so now what if we add another antibiotic to this plate. Now this could be any antibiotic. I'm going to use the example I used in the last video. So erythromycin. 
we've now added another antibiotic. What's going to happen now? Well, this antibiotic is going to kill all of these colonies unless one of these colonies mutates to form a resistance to erythromycin. And so let's say, for example, only this colony on the left mutates. We will now have an agar plate that looks something like this. Now, we have killed almost all the bacteria because we've used another antibiotic, but this bacteria is resistant to, so resistant to erythromycin. But remember, it came from the bacterial colonies which are resistant to penicillin. So it's now resistant to erythromycin and penicillin. And this is where we start to create massive problems. Because if we leave this overnight to incubate, we will form a plate that looks something like this. So again, overnight, or over a period of time, this colony has been allowed to reproduce and reproduce because obviously there's no other bacteria taking up all the nutrients so it keeps reproducing and now we have loads of bacteria which are resistant to both penicillin and erythromycin. This is a huge problem of course because now we've got loads of bacteria which are starting to resist loads of our antibiotics. And although I've used a lab and petri dish as an example here, this is actually what happens if we overuse antibiotics. So if we have a, a very mild bacterial infection and we decide to take antibiotics, very few of those bacteria may develop a resistance to that antibiotic that we've taken. And then they will not be killed and so can reproduce. If they carry on reproducing and then we decide no we need to we need to get rid of this so we're going to take another antibiotic, you take something else and then some of those could mutate to that antibiotic as well. You keep doing that and you keep doing that and you'll end up with bacteria which are almost like a superbug and they are resistant to many different types of antibiotic and therefore extremely hard to kill. And this is exactly what happened when the superbug known as MRSA appeared in our hospitals. Now MRSA stands for Metacillin Resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Staphylococcus, this is awful to spell, Staphylococcus, I think this is right, yep, aureus. Methicillin is a antibiotic and there are various other antibiotics that the MRSA was also resistant to. So in hospitals where there are loads of antibiotics being used, MRSA was able to become resistant to loads of those different antibiotics and therefore remained in the hospital without being killed. And so this was a result of natural selection because obviously any Staphylococcus aureus, this is the bacteria, any of those bacteria that were not resistant to the antibiotics would have been killed. And so natural selection led to resistance awful handwriting sorry resistance to multiple antibiotics antibiotics there we go and because this bacteria is so dangerous and we want to stop it spreading and becoming even more resistant there are a number of steps that we now need to take in hospitals so antibiotics I'm going to shorten to AB antibiotics only used when needed. So for something which is not severe, we no longer prescribe antibiotics to try and stop this sort of outspread um, occurring again. Also, specific bacteria, so bacteria, should be treated with specific antibiotics. Specific ABs. And that's because some bacteria can be killed by some antibiotics and not others. And also, some antibiotics will only work on certain bacteria. And so therefore, it makes sense for us to be very specific and target certain bacteria with single antibiotics. Because this will stop um, bacteria 
from developing resistance to loads of different antibiotics because we are not putting them in an environment when they be can become resistant to those. And to stop the spread, because obviously bacteria can be spread in our hands, so there are germs everywhere, we need to have very strict hygiene. So hand washing and everything else, you've probably seen all the antibacterial gels. They kill most bacteria because they're extremely strong. Uh, we can't take those as drugs because they'll probably kill us as well. But strict hygiene for both staff and visitors. So when you go into a hospital now, you have to wash your hands with this alcohol gel. And that's because we need to stop the spread of harmful bacteria. Now, the last thing I want to mention is that mutation, let's do this in a different color. Mutation not only leads to resistance to, back to, to um, antibiotics, sorry, it can also lead to new disease or strains of a disease. So you will have heard of various different strains of flu. You've probably heard of swine flu, bird flu, things like that. Loads of different strains of flu can appear because the pathogens mutate and therefore the disease that they cause becomes slightly different because they work in a different way. And because these new mutations form slightly different pathogens, that means that they have new antigens as well. So new pathogens, they have different antigens, which just means that they have different markers, which means that we can recognize them. That means that our immune system doesn't recognize them. So for example, the common cold changes so often, and that is why we can get a cold very often, because we have a slightly different pathogen affecting us each time, most likely. So it doesn't recognize them. Okay. On a more serious note, if we have a mutation which forms a uh, particularly effective pathogen, we can get what we call an epidemic. An e epidemic is an outbreak of a certain disease or pathogen in a country. So, for example, you can have an epidemic of Ebola is a serious example. You can have an epidemic of bird flu, maybe in a certain country because the pathogen is there. And on a bigger scale, pandemic. And that is an outbreak, several countries, or even globally. And so obviously Ebola went from epidemic to pandemic. Uh, various other diseases would do the same thing because nowadays people can travel on airplanes and go wherever they want. And so if you have a pathogen and you decide to go on holiday, you can then spread that to other people in the different country. And then we have a widespread effect where pathogens can become epidemic, if you like, in each country, and that forms a pandemic. So various examples there. Swine flu is a good example because we actually dealt with that pretty well. Other pandemics have not been dealt with well in the past um, and they, call, they pose a real threat. Okay, and so mutation is the core of that. Now I'm gonna stop there. Um, if you do have any questions on that, then please do send me an email using the link below or leave a comment in the comment box. And in the next video, we're gonna talk about how we deal with the disease and how we stop disease from spreading. Okay, so thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.